Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Steelcast Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ronak Jain from Orient Capital. Their investor relations. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Ronak Jain. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call of Steelcast Limited. Today on this call, we have Mr. Chetan Tamboli, Chairman and Managing Director. Mr. Rishul Tamboli, Old Time Director, Mr. Subhash Sharma, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Umesh Bhatt, Company Secretary. Before we begin this call, I would like to give a short disclaimer. This call may contain forward-looking statements about a company which are based on beliefs, opinions, and expectations as of today. Actual results may differ materially. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve unforeseen risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. A detailed safe harbor statement is given on page number 2 of the investor presentation of the company which has been uploaded on the stock exchange and the company's website as well. With this, I now hand over the call to Mr. Chetan Tamboli sir for his opening remarks. Over to you sir. Yeah, thank you Orion Capital. Uh, uh, good afternoon uh, and welcome to everyone. Uh, for joining this uh, Steelcast Limited Investors Call. Uh, as we step into FY25, the global geopolitical landscape remains very challenging, marked by ongoing conflicts and significant elections worldwide. These events are poised to influence the direction of the global economy. While major central banks have hinted at potential rate cuts throughout the year, the persistent lack of progress on inflation remains a concern. As we Previously communicated upon entering FY24, we anticipated flat growth due to unfavorable geopolitical conditions. However, we maintain cautious optimism regarding a turnaround in the global situation, particularly from Q3 FY25 onwards. Let's now look into our financial performance for Q4 FY24. And uh, that is the annual results of FY24. The revenue for Q4 improved to 98.4 crores from 90.3 crores for the previous quarter, an improvement of 9%. However, revenue for Q4, FY24, declined 18.2% compared to corresponding quarter of previous year from 120.3 crores to 98.4 crores due to adverse uh, geopolitical and business situation. We have been able to maintain EBITDA margin of 29.3% during Q4 FY24 against 30.3% during previous quarter and 25.7% in the corresponding quarter of previous year. EBITDA in absolute value stood at 28.8 crores during Q4 FY24 against 27.3 crores during previous quarter and 31.0 crore in corresponding quarter of previous year. Bet margins for Q4 FY24 maintained at 19% Again, same margin during previous quarter and improved again 16.2% of corresponding quarter of previous year. Fact in absolute value stood at 18.7 crores during Q4 FY24, again 17.4 crores during previous quarter and 19.5 crores in the corresponding quarter of previous year. As anticipated, the revenue for FY24 is Rs 409.8 crores against 476.8 crores in the previous year, showing a decrease of 14.1%. The decrease in revenue was primarily attributed to reduce economic activity in Western and North American countries, leading to an inventory buildup by OEMs. We anticipate resurgence in, uh, resurgence in demand starting from second half of FY25. EBITDA margins of 28.6% during FY24 substantially improved from 23.9% during previous year. EBITDA for the year stood at 117.8 crore against Rupees 114 crore in the previous year. Pet margins of 18.3% during FY24 shown a significant increase from that of 14.8% during previous year. Pet stood at 75 crores against 70.5 crores in the previous year. 
to sum up we say that despite decline in revenue by 14.1% we have been able to protect our margin profit showing an increase of 6.4% in pat terms Furthermore, our strategic initiatives to cultivate new customer relationships, diversify into emerging sectors, and explore untapped markets have played a pivotal role in stabilizing our turnover. This has resulted in a less volatile revenue stream compared to earlier years. The strong growth in our EBITDA and PAT in FY24 can be attributed to reduced costs following the commission of our power power plants and solar plants. These plants. meeting 80% of our captive requirements have led to significant savings in power and fuel expenses our renewable energy plants both solar and hybrid have operated efficiently and generated annual savings net savings in ex- in excess of rupees 12 crores in fy24 further we are planning to add one additional megawatt of captive solar power plant to further reduce cost over the past 3 years we have maintained the debt free status indicating our prudent financial management an ability to operate without relying on long term borrowings in terms of revenue contribution exports and domestic sales stood at 57.7% and 42.3% respectively in fy24 the domestic construction equipment industry has demonstrated robust growth posting a 25% increase in fy24 we are very excited to announce the commencement of serious product supplies to the north american railroad industry from q3 fy25 onwards This is expected to contribute significantly to our revenue. Looking ahead, we are well positioned to diversify our portfolio into newer sectors such as railroad, ground engineering, tools, and defence opportunities, anticipating substantial revenue growth in the coming two to three years. The new railroad segment is expected to gain momentum from Q3 FY25 onwards, while discussions with customers in the ground engineering tools segment are promising. Moreover, the different segment holds significant potential for the future. Furthermore, the customers increasingly adopting the China Plus One strategy. There is a growing trend towards sourcing from India and other regions, which we expect will enhance our market share. We, we remain committed to exploring further opportunities and are confident in our ability to deliver value to our stakeholders. In the current financial year, we foresee a subdued Q1 and Q2, and we see an uptrend from Q3 onwards. Uh, thank you, and we now uh, open the floor for question and answers. Thank you again. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sahil Sangvi. from monarch network capital please go ahead hello mr sahil yes sir am i audible yes sir please go ahead yeah uh, good evening chairman sir and uh, many congratulations for uh, you know uh, 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 getting a, a bad growth even in such difficult times uh, on on a full year basis uh to start with sir uh, my first question is on the demand side while you have given a lot of details on how uh, you know you see the uh, the demand uh, moving around, i mean moving for the year i just want to understand from the schedules that you getting for production from your uh, client are you uh, getting a feel that the restocking is uh, coming to an end i mean can we get some understanding on that front uh Yeah, Sahil. But can you uh, ask all your questions, and I'll re- respond together. So you can ask your second question. My uh, second question is, sir, uh, what was the uh, contribution from American railroads in FY24, both absolute uh, in uh, rupees uh, million or rupees crores, and also, I mean, yeah, uh, in rupees million, rupees crores, and how do you see this, uh, you know, going ahead as in FY25, 26? 
how do you see this uh, moving upwards? And my third question is regarding uh, uh, the capex. So I understand that one megawatt power plant. I think uh, you will be spending some five six crores on that, um, and uh, any other capex plans. So the capex number also, if at all, you can give us for FI twenty five. That's all. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sahil Bhai. On the demand side, uh, uh, we have been hearing that uh, these talking uh, uh, should be over by the end of the first quarter. Means uh, we're talking about June, uh, June 24. Uh, but maybe, might be, we might, maybe this might be extended by one more quarter. So, on a safer side, let's assume that these talking would be completely over by. Uh, September 24. And then on the demand side, uh, uh, we do see some uh, slowdown, uh, not a significant slowdown, but that too we keep hearing that this is also again a temporary measures. Once, uh, uh, the, once there is some relief on the Russia-Ukraine war and also uh, the Israel and Hamas war. So hopefully the expectation is all this to will end hopefully by June, July. So, right. so things should pick up uh, shortly from uh, on a conservative basis uh, from Q3 onwards, but we might see a turnaround earlier also. Uh, on the railroad side, uh, on the railroad side, uh, for FY24, we did about 2% of our uh, total sales which would result into about eight, eight crores of sales. And going forward, uh, this number by, 20, uh, by 26, 27 uh, should be around uh, 14 to 15 percent. Uh, regarding CAPEX, uh, uh, this additional one megawatt is, as, as our output is likely to grow. So uh, we would add this one megawatt on our existing facilities. And uh, which would, of course, result into some savings of uh, 1.5 to 1.75 crores. And the other uh, uh, capex for uh, you know debottlenecking and adding uh, adding machining capacities, uh, capex for the year will be about 22 crores. One follow question, please. Yeah, Aside by our answer to your question, sir. Question, when do you expect this uh, power plant to be commissioned? Uh, we, will start, we will start somewhere around uh, July, August, and hopefully by December 31, 24, this should be commissioned. Lastly, uh, uh, have we seen some reduction in the raw material prices uh, in Q4, say, and could this translate into some uh, price correction for our end product in uh, in this year? I mean, uh, uh, should we be expecting some kind of pricing correction? See, the input price uh, have been uh, uh, have been reducing from uh, uh, Q Q2, Q3, Q Q4 in FY24. So there are marginal sales corrections. Uh, sales price correction have been happening, and uh, so for the first quarter we will have. Some sales price correction, but again, in the first quarter, the input price has started going up again. So, uh, there would be a sales price increase from, uh, say, Q2 onwards. But, but overall, it will be a very marginal uh, decrease. Uh, sales volume number, the volume number in tons for Q4? For Q4, you said? Uh, can you repeat your question, please? What for Q4, sir? Sir, uh, the sales volume number for Q4, sir. Q4 FI24. Yeah, Q4, uh, Q4 is about 3,100 tons. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, so much for answering all my questions and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question.
The next question is from the line of Harshil Solanki from Equity Capital Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi team, uh, good afternoon. I had a few questions. I'll uh, ask them together. So uh, we had to supply five tax for June Bank by March 24. So is the supply over? And have we got any repeat orders for that? The second question is uh, the emission norms are expected to change in uh, January 25. So are we seeing any free buying on account of that? And which will help us increase our domestic uh, sales at least for each month. And uh, in the PPT, we are saying that uh, the export, uh, we are trying to uh, reach 18 countries plus and we are currently at 15. So which countries are you looking to enter and what could be the potential uh, on that side? Yeah, these are my questions. Yeah, uh, the, the different supplies, uh, what we had to do, have, were shipped uh, in the last quarter of FY24. Uh, we now have to wait for uh, the tenders to, you know, new tenders to open, and then we will again bid on it. But as far as uh, we are concerned, we have done our job in supplying uh, uh, the balance supplies, which, which happened, as I said, in, uh, in Q4 FY24. Regarding these emission norms, uh, now the, we supply to all the manufacturers for off-highway trucks or heavy equipment. Uh, these emission norms are, doesn't apply to them. These emission norms are mainly for automobiles, LCVs, and things like that. So uh, any changes there will not affect uh, our business scenario. And regarding... Uh, and regarding the additional focus on uh, some fewer countries, we have been trying on several, several countries. It will be difficult to name which ones we succeed and which ones we don't succeed. But from uh, uh, we expect to uh, supply to 18 countries in the next two, three years. And present, and present countries are what, about 12, 13 or so? Okay, got it, sir. That emission norm that I was referring to was for the off-highway vehicles only, but anyways, uh, no issue. Okay. Then, uh, uh, no, no, we are not aware of this, nor have our customers have told us this. So, uh, we have no idea. Plus, moreover, uh, these are more connected to engines, and we don't supply any engine components. We, we supply all the undercarriage components. So... So any changes in, in uh, emission norms will not affect our our business, whether upwards or downwards. No, sir. I, what I was thinking was that if prices increase of the final vehicles, the customers may prepone their buying decisions, and therefore we may see an increase of supply of our components to that vehicles which the OEMs will increase because the demand may get preponed. So that was where I was coming from. Okay. Uh, no, um, I think we don't. See, we are not seeing any, uh, you know, upward uh, change for for that matter from our existing customers. Understood. Understand. One last question on the working capital cycle. Our cycle has increased to 90 days from 64 days. So can you please uh, explain why that increase has happened? See, uh, you know, we make a large variety of products and uh, generally the throughput times are different for different products. Every product has a different throughput time. So if our product mix has have changed in the last in the last quarter, that could be the reason for the increase in uh, uh, the cycle to 90 days. But I'm just verifying whether our what you are saying is, are we seeing? It's there in a VPT. Uh, I'm referring to the VPT. Sorry? The inventory control. The So our debt debtors have gone up, uh, but but otherwise uh, uh, rest rest is all okay. This should this should this should also decrease. 
सॉरी पेबल्स हैव डिक्रीज इज इट डू टू द एनएसएमई नॉर्म्स और कम अदर रीजन तो फिल्टर्स इन इन्वेंटरीज आर डिक्रीज फिल्टर्स आर इंक्रीज ओके सो बट दिस इज अ टेंपरेरी थिंग एंड इट विल रिवाइज और हाउ डू यू थिंक um i think on a on a very macro level we are we are on track the only thing is these these aberrations keep happening you know during the year of course so downwards yeah. but our uh, working capital cycle are uh, uh, intact and uh, we should do uh, anywhere from uh, 75 to 80 days on a sustainable basis okay okay got it thank you thank you thank you thank you A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Shetty from Solidarity Advisory Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hey, hello. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Just a few questions from my side. Um, so you know, we demonstrated a lot of resilience in our EBITDA in a particular tough year. um there's obviously some benefits on the power cost savings but even if you adjust for that it's still quite strong so uh is it fair to assume that you know uh that our de-risking strategy that we have implemented over the years has you know kind of borne fruit for us and going forward you know we should be able to navigate more uh tough environments with less cyclicality in our earnings is that a fair assumption to make Okay, this is your first question. Can you ask uh, uh, your sec- uh, another question? I'll respond together. Okay, okay. I ha- I had three questions, and so um, my second question was more on you know this. How does uh, uh, one? Uh, maybe I'll club question two and three is. But um, you know we've had a great year in terms of EBITDA margin and return on equity. So um, does one uh, kind of assume that this could sustain going forward, or there are some pressures that would come, like as we've mentioned in the past, uh, uh, that you know the margin band could go back to where we you know used to buy. And uh, on return on equity, um, uh, you know, does this number sustain, or if we ever choose to do a greenfield project in the future, the ROEs could come down because the asset terms could be lower. <laughs> See, uh, um, over the last few years, we have aggressively worked on de-risking uh, the whole company. We have added uh, uh, many end-user industries. With the result, the cyclic uh, the cyclicality is surely uh, reduced substantially, and this journey will continue over the next uh, three four years also. So going forward, uh, this will further reduce the volatility. Will surely surely reduce. and on the ebitda margins uh, we have always said that we work uh, on 22 23% ebitda margin and then uh, then try try on our cost savings and uh, improvement in operating efficiencies uh, uh, and get those extra few percentage points uh, but if one would ask uh, on a sustainable basis i think uh, hopefully 25 26 should be a good number which which can be sustained over a longer term got it um and sir on the return on equity um this my question is more on say the assets uh, the fixed asset turns in our business um you know uh, which is uh, you know good margins and our asset turns leading to good return on equity so uh, if we what if we say we And back on the greenfield side, you know, whenever the asset in the overall market has been tightened, do you think that we could get the sort of return on sort of payback treated on uh, the future investment we make? Uh, the return on equity uh, are quite sustainable, but as long as the you know net profits increase, the you know bottom the denominator increases. so uh, with the increase of the profits uh, that will be you know effect on the uh, thing uh, ratio but however the, the range of between 30 to 35 is you know sustainable seems to be sustainable 30 to 35 is 
return on uh, capital employed or return on equity? Uh, return on equity. Return on equity. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Chet from Quest Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, Chetan. Why? Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations you and your team for good set of number. Yeah. Thank you, Bharat. Bye. Uh, in this domestic side, this year our volume. Uh, QOQ volume as well as value has gone. It was, so how much of overall defense has contributed? And since you said that in 25 defense may not contribute, so how do we see domestic business export? You have said largely it will be a growth will in second half. See the uh, the supplies in the domestic cabin, I mean, the defense industry is very insignificant if you. Uh, uh, if you really ask for in FY24, okay. uh, and uh, uh, o- overall situation is uh, you know little complex with uh, with all the geopolitical issues and uh, uh, as I said earlier, we see little s- slowdown also. Now this could be you know combination of factors. So, okay. so first uh, Q1, Q2 will be uh, softer and subdued, and then we see an uptrend from Q3 onwards. So, when we see an up, when we see an uptrend, the uptrend will come from domestic market as, as well as exports. It will happen in tandem. Okay. So, and second, thing, second by now you said that railway, which is uh, around say, 8 crore, we want to be a 14, 15 percent in FY27. This year from 8 crore, we, do we see a good amount of growth because railway we started supplying from the second half onward and quantity ramp up is happening. So how do we see ramp up is happening on US railroad? Uh, but there has been a, a slight delay uh, in uh, the uptrend in the North American railroad segment you know, happening. Uh, okay. But um, I, we are quite confident here. We, we, we should reach 14, 15% of our sales in FY27. So, so we are at 2% now. Uh, the current year we should do 5, 25, 26, surely we should do uh, 9, 9.5%, nine followed by the, in 26, 27, are reaching 14, 15%. So our, our, our smart goal is we have to get to 19. Okay. 19, 19 or 20 percent. So we are on that path with some delays, uh, ex- delays happening because of external factors with one or two quarters here or there. But uh, on a macro level, we are on track and we, we will achieve this. Okay, great. And are we working on something, developing a new parts or uh, doing something? Uh, I mean, uh, which, uh, uh, Bharat Bhai, this is an ongoing exercise. It's nothing that this developing new parts happen, uh, you know, uh, with a lag of one or two years. This, this it goes on every year. So, uh, as as we want to diversify the end user industries, we also we are also in constant uh, uh, effort to broad base the products also here. Yeah. So more and more we do, this will you know nourish the company more and more. You know. Okay. So, and, I mean, putting a, a different perspective, see, whatever we introduce a new product developed in the last three, four years, how much does it contributing currently and how do we see because initially it will be a low number, then it start ramping up? Yeah, but, uh, but, but by honest, honestly, um, I don't have the breakup now that uh, what were yes, no the numbers from the base products and what's the number from the new products? So we don't have that as of now. But, uh, you know, generally, once we develop, the ramp up happens in two, three years' time, you know, uh, uh, gradually. But, but, uh, but when the overall macro scenario is subdued or slow, you know, we don't see the benefit of those developments. But, but, but we surely see Q3 onwards, uh, uh, we should be on an uptrend. Okay, and on this uh, 
broad and perspective so are we looking uh, supplying catering to australia or say sir south uh, america or you know, are we looking for those kind of a market um as as i said earlier we uh, we supplied to about 12 13 countries and we in next 2 3 years we want to get to at least 18 countries okay and uh, australia and brazil is part of our radar so but obviously we do efforts in 7 8 countries and maybe succeeding two three countries so that is a happen but these countries are part of our radar and we are working on it okay and any early i mean the success i we see i mean negotiation or it is a, at uh, what level i mean in that their journey um i can only say now that uh, the our efforts are on and uh, our direction is very clear the strategy what we have decided is also on track now it's matter of time you know one or two or three quarters here or there but uh, as far as the end user industries are concerned uh, the increasing number of countries are concerned increasing number of products are concerned we are very very conscious and uh, our direction is clear that uh, uh, i can uh, you know you can be rest assured that our a uh, macro direction is uh, sustainable and uh, on track and is it fair understanding since we are seeing the in existing our customer base is uh, some trouble and we have sufficient capacity so at the moment uh, this greenfield plant that we were evaluating is we are not pursuing it um we, we will pursue it but we have put this on hold is on a pause now uh once we have some clear direction on uh, you know utilization of existing capacities then we can trigger the new capacities here. so um, a lot of work has been done as per the you know but only thing is we'll tri- we'll trigger this at appropriate time okay okay thank you thanks thank and you. all the best sinton bhai thank you thank you varun bhai thank you yes. thank you sir thank you sir the next question is from the line of ashwini agarwal from demeter advisors llp please go ahead jitin bhai uh, congratulations very good uh, results given a very challenging environment especially on the margin yeah. performance thank you thank um, you so couple of questions you know i was thinking about you know you, you earlier mentioned in response to a question that our margins hopefully in the next three four years we get to 25 26% um, and i was just doing a quick calculation um, you know your margins have consistently increased on a per ton basis like four okay. five years ago they used to be in the handle of about 70000 rupees uh, per ton now it's about 90000 rupees per ton 88 90000 rupees per ton uh, would the increase in the us railway business for example um and depends of course we don't know whether it will come or not come but ground engaging to uh, you know something that we've been trying to break into how do you think this number will move um, so you know because material price is a pass through so looking at revenue and percentage of revenue is a harder uh, estimate to make i was wondering if we can just look at a bit data turn and does that make any sense so uh we really uh, don't keep measuring uh, uh, you know uh, ebitda per ton or something but we uh, in our pricing strategy we aim anywhere from 20 to 20% and then end up end up getting sometimes we end up with 3 4% some quarters we may we may get a little more also but it be uh, safe to assume that 25 26 might be possible uh on a sustainable basis okay and so uh, 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 again i don't want to bhar by question on the green field capacity i know you know there are plans in place and everything is ready uh, how much would you need to spend uh, uh, on the green field and from day zero how long does it take to get the capacity operational in your opinion see for us to increase uh, Uh, say to put up another 10000 ton it will cost us about 125 crores uh and uh, the throughput time to from the date of uh, go decision one commissions uh, in about 24 months time 
So, uh, uh, generally we are seeing in the industry, people are putting capacities in anticipation of uh, uh, the pickup in demand, uh, you know, up to two years or so. Uh, we are really conservative uh, uh, thinkers and uh, uh, unless we get a, a, a very, very clear signal, we would not like to trigger this. So, but as I said, there are a lot of people who, who do things in anticipation. No, I think what you're doing is fair because every company has uh, its own um, priority. So, I, I wouldn't comment on that. I think that's fine. But at the existing site, where you have roughly 30,000 capacity, uh, is there any scope to do more than that? Should the demand suddenly come around and you find yourself short of capacity? Uh, in, in our uh, uh, line of business, you know, like nothing happens overnight. You know, we there will be always a learning curve, and uh, we still have uh, enough capacity to uh, to cater to even any sudden surge in demand. You know, we are we are ready for it. Now, uh, the smart way to do would be to see that any surge in demand, whether it's sustainable or a little longer time. We don't want to be in a situation we spend 125 crores and then wait for another few years till we, you know, get a penny out of it. So, so the so our, our approach, as, as I said, is slightly conservative, but in the larger interest of all stakeholders. Um, it's good. It's, it's, it's better to do the way we do rather than, you know, work on anticipation and do things on speculation. No, no, that's fair. No, uh, I wish you the best. Thank you so much uh, uh, for being Thank on you. the call and answering all our questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meet Mehta from Bank of India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for very resilient performance in difficult times. Most nice. of my questions have been answered. Just one question. Uh, typically, historically, I would like to understand your experience with uh, commodity prices rising. How, how does it affect the demand of our products? Recently, we have seen that uh, commodity prices have been itching up. So, how does it impact our business? Um, there is definitely a correlation between... Uh, commodity prices and demand of our products. Um, more the increase in commodity prices, there will be more mining going on, more equipments are needed and more our products are needed more. So, uh, increase in commodity prices is a signal that uh, with a lag of one, two or three quarters, we will see the de revival of demand. And, and this is one reason we have been saying that there will be an uptrend likely uptrend from Q3 onwards. So, there is a definite correlation between commodity prices and uh, the demand. Oh, very clear, sir. Are we seeing that on the ground or are we getting that indication from our clients? It, 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 yes, we, we have get, been getting indications also, but as, as I said earlier, uh, the, uh, the de-stocking and uh, uh, the inventory clear up and all that is happening, we should it should have ended by June, but maybe let's assume it will end by September. Yeah. So once that is over, then there will be a, a, a sudden you know, increase in demand also, which we see from Q3 onwards. Okay. And typically, let's say if demand comes, how long does it take to you know ramp up our production and increase utilization? Uh, actually, we are ready... Uh, uh, we did about 13, 13 and a half, 14,000 tons of sales, uh, but uh, we are equipped with in terms of manpower and all the resources required. We are ready for 18,000 tons. So once uh, demand picks up, by the time we reach 18 and if the requirement is more, we'll work on it and make sure that we cater to the demand. But uh, so there is a definite uh, capacity available to cater to that increased demand. Very clear. That's all from me. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sahil Doshi from Thinkwise Wealth Managers LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just two questions. One is on the US Railroad. I think uh, 
we had certain approvals which were pending. So, can you possibly illustrate what the state is and uh, how would the ramp up plan be for the year? And uh, the second question relates to this recently announced, uh, you know, certain duties on on uh, in the US against China on the steel products. So, do you uh, emphasize that this could be a significant opportunity in the long term for Indian exporters like us? Uh, can you repeat your first question? Yeah, my first question related to US rail. Uh, meaning I understand that we had certain delays in terms of approvals, part approvals for the, uh, this thing. So could you possibly illustrate where we are and how do we spread that up on the US railroad? Yeah. Uh, as far as the uh, approvals are concerned, we have all the approvals in place to start the ramp up. Uh, there are certain uh, initial hiccups happening, which is, uh, so that's the reason the serial supplies are at, haven't really started, which we expect to start from Q, Q3 onwards. Uh, so these are some issues with our customers. They, in turn, they're the external issues. So as far as we are concerned, we are ready, and it, things should start from Q3 onwards. And uh, uh, we, we, we've been also hearing that uh, the U.S. has put additional duties on uh, Chinese products, uh, similar to ours, and uh, we see some significant opportunities coming forward. We are not seeing as this happened only two weeks ago, but going forward, we uh, we are seeing this. Will be a lot of opportunities coming for us. So what will be the duty structure today and uh, from India versus China and uh, like to like possibly what could be the benefit in your opinion? Uh, we don't have exact numbers because in the import duties in the US uh, is a little complex. It varies from part to part. But I can say the differential in duties will be now between India and China will be close to 30-35%. Uh, Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you so much. And just one last question on the GET. Uh, you know, we've been anticipating that will be the next phase of growth. Could you talk a little more on that in terms of uh, which areas could it be, and by when do we really see some positivity coming through? Um, you know, we've been talking to. Uh, some big companies for this uh, for these products and uh, substantial headway is also made. We are waiting for some uh, indications from them, but uh, the opportunities are large. And uh, uh, over time, uh, we want uh, this ground engaging tools to be at least at least seven eight percent of our sales, which is now. Uh, in significant number of just one percent. The person you are speaking with has put your call on hold. Please stay on the. The participant got disconnected. The next question is from the line of Sahel Sangvi from Munak Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir. Thank you again for the opportunity. Um, so while you have been guiding on the margins that it's uh, uh, the 25-26% is a sustainable range, um, I uh, just want to try and understand that what could bring us down? I mean, uh, what could be those factors which can bring us down from the current levels to 25-26%? Uh, also uh, keeping in mind that we are still at around less than 50% utilization, so there will be some operational efficiencies also that will come in. So, if you can just help me with what are those, uh, you know, uh, factors that would uh, bring as, us down on margins? As as we uh, increase uh, revenues and increase output, uh, they may not be having the same EBITDA margins. You know? So, if you do another 10,000 ton with, uh, with, uh, with less assume we have 25% EBITDA. Right. If you average this out, 29 and 25, you will end up somewhere, you know, at uh, 25, 26 percent. So that's how it works. 
Okay, okay. So are you are you saying that probably the incremental orders will come at a lower price or uh, no, it's, will it's, the cost it's, be higher? Uh, it's it's not uh, it's not coming at price. See this this extra uh, EBITDA margins have come up from you know different different. It's a combination of seven eight factors. Now, right. It will be it will be it won't be prudent to believe that all these seven eight factors will keep happening every year. No. Right. So, so when you see on an average basis over a longer term, uh, so this has to drop to maybe to, that's that's why I'm giving an indication 25, 26 percent. Got it, sir. Got it. And my in question uh, would be uh, you have answered on ground engaging rules, but uh, you know uh, last September when we met, uh, you had uh, two other projects under uh, consideration, uh, one on track systems for excavators and. The heavyweight steel foundry. So, any developments on those fronts? Any uh, uh, trial? No, uh, no, there are no, there are no developments on those two fronts. Uh, uh, I think uh, this uh, uncertainties in the global scenario is uh, uh, making things a little slower down. But uh, uh, we have been talking, and probably people are taking their own time to respond. You know, so. Uh, uh, what has been ident- identified is right for our company. The question is, when does it materialize this? So the efforts are on. Let's see over next one or two quarters. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshil Solanki from Equitary Capital Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the follow up. So I had the question on capacity utilization only. So right now it's at forty percent, and we expect that maybe the margin can drop. So uh, are we willing to take uh, any orders at lower margins to and increase our capacity utilization? Because anyways, going forward we expect it to drop. So any other alternatives at a low margin, but. Uh, uh, higher utilization. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll answer again. Uh, our focus is. Who is that? Our focus is not to increase utilization at the cost of margins. Um, so if if we do that, we'll fill the capacity in the next few months. Here. But uh, but that that is not what we what uh, we, we 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 intend doing it. So. See, the drop in margins, as I said, is because of the, one may not get 28, 29% on a sustainable basis. So if you average things out, it would be about 25, 26%. Understood. And just one last small question. Our power cost uh, per ton has increased quarter on quarter basis. So what was the reason behind this? Because we have taken so many actions to reduce our power cost, but if I see the numbers, uh, it has increased on a quarter on quarter basis, or ton basis I am looking at. So, any reason for that? I think our power cost has gone down. Uh, where do you see it increasing rapidly? The absolute term is uh, 7.68 crore has gone up to 9.56 crore. And if you look at per term, because it's a variable cost, uh, that has also gone up. Uh, we haven't seen this on a per term basis, but uh, if you see with respect to sales, uh, Sales would not be the right sales of that. Because yeah. Uh, uh, with respect to sales, our power, fuel and water was 9.63%. And the uh, uh, previous quarter, 31-12 Q3 was 8.45. Now, the power has actually gone down, but there is increase in the cost of natural gas. So, these are all clubbed together. Okay, so power unit cost has gone up of the... Yeah, so, so, that so, yeah, so it's, it's power, fuel and water are all clubbed together and that's why you see a, an increase. But if you split power, it has gone down, the natural gas has gone up in, and, and net effects has increased. Okay, okay, I understand. 
directionally our net power cost is lower absolutely yes okay okay and all right thank you thank you uh on behalf of ecast and uh, uh myself uh, uh, thanks a lot for taking time out and joining this uh, conference call and i also want to thank uh, orient capital for facilitating this call and uh, uh, helping us uh, support all the investors so thank you again and we look forward connecting again in the future thank you thank you on behalf of steelcast limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines